Here we have the first theorem of this section. And in this theorem, we want to let A, B, and C be n by n matrices. Now the first property says that matrix A is similar to matrix A. Property two says that if matrix A is similar to matrix B, then matrix B is similar to matrix A. And the third property says that if matrix A is similar to matrix B, and matrix B is similar to matrix C, then matrix A is similar to matrix C. So as we begin the proof for each one of these properties, we want to keep the definition of similarity in mind. So property one, we want to show that matrix A is similar to matrix A. So if matrix A is similar to matrix A, then by definition, there exists an n by n invertible matrix P such that the inverse of P times A times P equals matrix A. So let's go ahead and let matrix P be the n by n identity matrix. Then by definition, the inverse of the n by n identity times A times the n by n identity equals matrix A. And so A is similar to A which ends our proof. To prove property number two, we want to show that if matrix A is similar to matrix B, then matrix B is similar to matrix A. So let's suppose that matrix A is similar to matrix B. Then by definition, there exists an n by n invertible matrix P, such that the inverse of P times A times P equals matrix B. So let's use this equation here and start by left-hand multiplying by matrix P. So rearranging these terms, we can eventually see that we end up with the result A times P equals P times B, which is equivalent to saying that matrix A is similar to matrix B. Now from here, let's go ahead and use this equation and right-hand multiply by the inverse of matrix P. So rearranging these terms, we end up with the resulting equation A is equal to P times matrix B times the inverse of matrix P. So from here, if we go ahead and let the inverse of matrix P be defined as matrix Q, we can see that P times B times the inverse of matrix P equals matrix A is equivalent to saying that we have the inverse of matrix Q times matrix B times matrix Q equals matrix A. Then we can conclude that by definition, since there exists an n by n invertible matrix Q, such that the inverse of Q times matrix B times matrix Q equals matrix A, we know that matrix B is similar to matrix A. Woohoo! So this officially confirms that if matrix A is similar to B, then matrix B is similar to matrix A, thus concluding our proof. To prove property number three, we need to verify that if matrix A is similar to matrix B, and if matrix B is similar to matrix C, then this implies that matrix A is similar to matrix C. So let's start by supposing that matrix A is similar to matrix B and that matrix B is similar to matrix C. Then by definition, we know that since A is similar to B, then there exists an n by n invertible matrix P such that B is equal to the inverse of P times A times P. And again, by definition, since matrix B is similar to matrix C, then we also know that there must exist an n by n invertible matrix Q, such that C is equal to the inverse of Q times matrix B times matrix Q. So starting with this equation for C, we can rewrite this by replacing matrix B with the inverse of matrix P times matrix A times matrix P. Now, by rewriting this equation and applying the properties of invertible matrices, we can see that C is equal to the inverse of the product of matrix P with matrix Q times matrix A times the product of matrix P with matrix Q. Now, 
if we go ahead and let the product of matrix P and matrix Q be equal to an n by n matrix, say, W, then we see that matrix C is equivalent to the inverse of matrix W times matrix A times matrix W. Hey, then by definition, we can see that there exists an n by n invertible matrix W such that C is equal to the inverse of matrix W times matrix A times matrix W, which lets us know that matrix A is similar to matrix C by definition. So therefore, we have verified that if A is similar to B and B is similar to C, then this implies that matrix A is similar to matrix C, thus concluding our proof.